I want to talk about upside down cones real quick, and it's because upside down cones, uh, they, they, they end up, you know, creating some really interesting. Um, they, they, they end up creating some really interesting problems that we can do. So, in this case, uh, what what are we going to look at? Uh, let's look at this problem. Mm, 14, 14. I wish we were in chapter 14 still. Uh, 15, 7, number 40. Right. So, D is the region in the first octant. So, uh, it's in the first octant. So, X is bigger than 0. Y is bigger than 0. Z is bigger than 0. Right. Um, bigger than or equal to. And uh, so our bounds really are going to be the coordinate planes. X is equal to zero, Y is equal to zero, Z is equal to zero. Okay? So D is going to be the region in the first octant bounded below by uh, the cone phi is equal to pi over four. Okay? And then above by the sphere, rho is equal to three. So we want to express the volume of D as an iterated triple integral in cylindrical and spherical coordinates. All right. So let's actually do it in spherical coordinates first, because that looks a lot easier, right? Because we have phi and we have rho. Okay. So uh, it's going to be some triple integral of rho squared uh, sine phi d rho d phi d theta. And okay, how do I know this is an upside down cone? Uh, phi equals something, this is an upside down cone. All right, and what do I mean by upside down cone? Upside down cone. And what do I mean by that? It just means that uh, it means that it looks like this. Um, all right, so really a rough sketch of a cone, but that's what I mean by an upside down cone. So think of it as an ice cream cone rather than a birthday hat. All right, so all right, uh, so this is what we have. Uh, what are our row bounds? Well, it looks like rho is equal to 3, right? Well, and there's nothing else here that's giving me a row bound. So rho will be from 0 to 3, okay? What are my phi bounds? Well, here, uh, it, it, well, the problem says I'm bounded below by uh, phi, equals pi over, uh, phi equals pi over 4 and above by the sphere. So if phi equals pi over four is going to be my lower bound, all right, um, then this is actually this is actually a really tricky question to think about because let's think about it. <laughs> right here is here is uh, y that's z that's x. If I'm bounded below by a cone and above by a sphere, right? So I'll have this thingy that looks like an ice cream cone, right? Um, and right, so here's uh, that sphere. But if we're just talking about the cone below and then above, right? I'm bounded by the ice cream cone. So this right here, this is going to be phi is equal to pi over four, right? This line stretching there because that angle right here is phi. So below by a phi angle actually makes my phi angle the upper bound, right? So phi is like the, for the phi bound, it's actually kind of like opposite of what you're thinking because right, I'm bounded above by the sphere, but above by the sphere means I'm gonna be on the sphere here, right? And I'm gonna go from this sphere point to this cone point right there. So maybe uh, I can make it a little cleaner, right? I'm gonna go from the sphere point to the cone point, okay? And yeah, so this the, again, the sphere, we start here at phi equals zero, and we're going to phi over four, right? So, it, so, so we're going this way. So when I'm bounded below by phi, right? I'm not putting pi over four down here because that's actually wrong. Pi over four is actually going to be my upper bound, right? And phi equals zero is going to be my lower bound. So keep that in mind. Uh, it's again, spherical coordinates, not as intuitive as you think they are. So uh, yeah, so that's going to be my phi bound, right? Even though it's bounded below by that and above by rho equals three, um, 
it doesn't mean that phi equals pi over 4 is going to be my lower bound. That It's actually the opposite. Phi equals pi over 4 is going to be my upper bound. So keep that in mind. Again, uh, I feel like I should emphasize that even more, but I feel like this drawing here uh, should help you work it out. Just look at the blue part, right? The blue part here is that sphere part, and then down here is the cone part. And we're go if you're bounded below by the cone, then you're moving out towards phi equals pi over 4 from phi equals 0. So you start here, and then you move here. And then theta, which has no bounds on it, uh, or it does in this case, but theta then gets rotated like that, right? So, okay, so then what is theta? Well, theta x equals 0, y equals 0 means theta has to be in the xy plane here, right? If it's in the first, uh, if you draw x and y, um, if, if they're greater than zero, then theta can only get stuck in the first quadrant, and so that's going to be between zero and pi over two. Okay, so this is going to be the integral, uh, the integral in spherical coordinates. All right, and then uh, what's the integral in cylindrical coordinates? Ah, so phi equals pi over four. Okay, converting this into uh, converting this into uh, Cartesian coordinates is super uh, non-intuitive. But essentially, yeah, phi is equal to pi over four, right? What am I going to do? Yeah, phi is equal to pi over four, right? Um, rho equals three. And rho equals three. So these are our two surfaces, right? Well, rho equals three is easy because that's the sphere with radius three. So I can just write that as x squared plus y squared plus z squared uh, is equal to nine, right? That's the that's the sphere radius three. What is phi equals pi over four? Um, yeah. Uh, so what you want to do then is you want to figure out what is Essentially, you want to figure out arctan phi is equal to pi over 4. All right. So you want to figure out what value makes it such that arctan of x. Well, so actually, I'm, I'm reading this wrong. So let's look at phi is equal to pi over 4. Um, phi is equal to pi over 4, which is going to be arctan of some number. Uh, let's call it... Uh, what, what should we call this? Uh, arctan k. All right. Pi over 4 is equal to arctan k. So what in the world is going to have an arctan? What k value is going to get me pi over 4 for the arctangent? And I can't think of one off the top of my head. All right. This is actually uh, super not intuitive. And hopefully the book has a way to help you figure out uh, how to figure out the conversion here because I am lost. Huh. Phi is equal to pi over four. What in the world would that cone be? I Pi over four is equal to arctangent K. Oh yeah, okay, okay, okay. I see. So, uh, so, 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 if I take the tangent of both sides, right, then uh, I'll find k. So, so you want to find k here, and then k is going to be equal to tangent of pi over four, which is equal to one. All right. So, what what does that mean? So, pi over four is equal to arctan one. Well, that means that. When you have this equation, once you found k, once you found one, which is equal to k, uh, you have the equation k times z is equal to the square root of x squared plus y squared. That's what it means. And I know this this makes absolutely no sense at all. Um, it, it feels like I'm just pulling this from my butt, um, but I promise you, uh, this is what you get. All right, so. 
so phi equals pi r four equals arctan one, and then since and then equals arctan k, right? And then you find that k is equal to one uh, because the tangent of pi over four is equal to one. So then arctan of one is equal to pi over four. And then here you see that of z then is equal to x squared plus y squared. So yeah, super super non-intuitive here. So again, let's let's cover let's cover this. So let's let's re let's rephrase let's rephrase all of this actually. Okay. We know phi is equal to pi over four, all right? And so what I want to do then is I want to take pi over four and I want to plug it into tangent of pi over four, which gets me one, all right? And this value one is equal to some value k, all right? Uh, and so k is equal to tangent of phi. And then uh, what do I have? Then I have z or k times z is equal to the square root of x squared plus y squared. All right, just take this um, for what it is, and to find k, uh, it's equal to tangent phi. So in our case, then k is equal to one, and so our equation for our cone is going to be z is equal to square root of x squared plus y squared. All right, okay, enough of that. So we got our two equations in Cartesian now, and how are we gonna write them in cylindrical? Well. Uh, so you have z is equal to square root of x squared plus y squared, which means it's actually just equal to r, right? Because um, in cylindrical then, uh, right, x squared plus y squared is r squared, and you get that. And then the next equation you gotta solve, which then you got nine minus x squared minus y squared, um, which actually then becomes uh, nine minus r squared, right? But this is z squared, and then z is equal to plus or minus root nine minus r squared, okay? So you got the cone, and then you got the sphere, all right? And notice for the sphere, we actually don't want the negative sign because we have these other bounds, right? We got x equals zero, y equals zero, z equals zero, so it has to be positive, and then so we actually choose, uh, choose the positive one square root because uh, because we're in the first quadrant, first octant. Okay, all right. So it looks like we have our z bounds now, and my z bounds then in uh, spherical, uh, in cylindrical coordinates, we got r d z d r d theta. Right, we're bounded below by the cone, and here there's no shenanigans. Below actually means below, so we're going to put r there, and then above we're going to put uh, square root of nine minus r squared. Okay. Now what? Now we got to find where they're equal to each other, right? Now we got to find the intersection to find uh, a drawing in the xy plane. So I set my z's equal to each other. I got r is equal to uh, just plus root 9 r squared minus r squared, all right? And now r squared is equal to 9 minus r squared. 2 r squared is equal to 9. r squared is equal to 9 halves. r is equal to 3 divided by root two. So my R bounds are going to go from zero to three divided by root two. And then my theta bounds are going to go from zero to two pi or zero to pi over two. And the reason zero to pi over two is because, uh, again, up here, I'm restricted in the XY plane um, in, in this upper, uh, upper right quadrant. So, okay. Wow, this was a very dense video. Uh, I know there's some places where it just seems like I'm pulling shit out of my ass, um, but we, we got we got the cylindrical uh, we got the cylindrical uh, integral, and we got the uh, spherical integral as well up here. So uh, there we go. I just drew over it. Here's that spherical uh, integral, and there's that cylindrical integral, and they're going to be equal if you actually evaluate both of them. Uh, you're going to get the same answer. So, okay, uh, that's it for 15.7. And in 15.8, then we are going to, uh, uh, we're going to discuss uh, change of variables integration, which is very important uh, as well. And yeah, that's exciting. And I believe there's going to be two videos in that, um, in that section. So I'll see you guys in the next video.